wasn't that good? Can we give our team a hand? Woo. Uh, we, give a, we give applause to that because we give in love and all that. We know it goes to God, and God, God is so pray. So God is so pleased with our worship. And, and what I've learned is, like, you know, some days I'm just, like, not feeling it. Like, you know what, come today was a good day. I'm feeling it. But I, maybe my, but my voice doesn't match my heart sometimes. Like, it's like, but it matters in the heart, doesn't it? Like, if you're kind of like, oh, I'm trying to sing. I'm trying to squeak something out. God loves that. I just want you to know. So if you open your mouth and praise and worship, that's, that's a good thing. But what matters right here is we express that uh, out to the Lord today. But we're great. As, as Carly mentioned, we're glad that those are online with us today. Maybe you're watching right now at this moment, at this time. We're glad to have you right now. Or this week, you're driving along, you're listening, not, not watching uh, us as we're participating in worship here together. We're glad to have you today. If you are new, I mentioned earlier, uh, we mentioned earlier but in the video, but we'd love to connect with you and whatever we can to pray for you, encourage you, anything like that, we're, we're here for you today. We're doing, we're doing a series, we're kind of a week before the week, so we've been a long series in the summer called Grace and Grit, and we're just talking about the parables of Jesus. And, and I've said over and over, like, I love Jesus, and I love his stories, especially the parables that he communicates, because they come with a punch at the end. You know what I mean? Like, Jesus has a way of communicating in, in such a way that he kind of goes, got you right there. Now, he doesn't get us to, like, stick it to us or anything. He does it in a good way, like, I'm here to help. I'm here to encourage you in your life to think a little bit deeper and more importantly, my, I talk about my kingdom, the kingdom of God, which is a huge topic. And Jesus breaks it down into some kingdom principles and he uses these stories that tell us, and today is going to be another one and it's going to be focused on responsibility really leading to trust that we're going to look at today. And one of the greatest ways expression of trust that we carry around in some form are these, our keys. We spend a lot of time with these keys. We also spend a lot of time looking for these things, right? Is that true? Are you with me? Some of you have little gadgets and little things that tell you it's connected to your phone, and then you go, that's great. I can't find my phone to find my keys. Okay, I'm with you. I'm with you on that, right? But the keys, they symbolize a lot, and, then, and really they, they represent a lot in reality. And you might remember way back in the day, that there was a state that issued you this plastic card with your mugshot on it, and you then presented it to your parents, and your parents with trembling hands went like this. Some of you, this is going to happen. Some of you are already responding to remember that day, and some of you remember when you, with trembling hands, gave those keys to someone that you're thinking, are they old enough? According to the state of Washington, they say, they say they are. And you hand it over, and for some of you, you remember getting those keys, and you climbed into a wood-paneled station wagon, and you thought it was the greatest thing you could ever drive. Guys, you remember that. You picked up your geeky friends. They're like, we got wheels. Let's go pick up. Well, I don't know if it was exactly a, a, a babe magnet of a car that you were driving there. But that's what you did. And you, you, then if you were a parent, you remember passing those on. The, to give someone a, a vehicle that's worth thousands of dollars, and it could kill people, okay? Not a good thing, not a combination, but that's what trust is. There's a trust. Here's, here's our question as we get going and talk about trust is, what, what has been a key that you have been, been entrusted with? There's something or someone that has been given to your, to your life. Okay? It's a possession. It's maybe a position you receive. But many times it's people. People that, that, that have been trusted with you to care for, to take care of. A set of keys that have been given that God has given you and has entrusted you with. You know, we're going to get into the story here with Jesus in this parable. But there's a setting in which Jesus empowers his people, which including, including us, it's in this area called Caesarea Philippi. If you go with us to Israel next June, by the way, we're going to be going to Caesarea Philippi, and you'll get it when you see it. There's this massive rock formation, and it's there that Jesus gathered with his disciples, and it's kind of a remote place from Galilee, and he said the words, as he says, you know, on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not come against it. 
And you get it, and you see the rock, and you go, okay, I get it. And then he said these words, probably some of the most empowering words that Jesus could say. He talked about keys, and he said this in Matthew 16, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. The keys of the kingdom. Talk about a set of wheels that you and you know, I are in charge of. We're entrusted with, like binding and standing. All that. What is he saying? I've given you some responsibility. I've given you a trust to take what I have in my kingdom and I'm giving to you. There's an empowerment there. Today's kingdom truth that we're saying is this. Life is a trust and that what we do today will matter tomorrow. Life is a trust that's been handed to us. What are we going to do with it? What we do with it today will matter tomorrow and in the, the next day and in the, the years to come. And over the many years I, of life, and I, I've looked at trust, and you probably heard this if we've shared it many different times over the years you've been around, is we talk about trust in three different areas. Three, three different areas. It's our, it's our time, it's our talent, and it's our treasure. If you, if you put in broad categories of responsibilities we give, if life is a trust, it's really in these three areas. We've been given time. All of us have been given the same amount of time each day, 24 hours a day. No one gets 23. No one gets more than 25. We all get it. Now, how many times of, we, of those days we get is another thing that is in it. But we're, we're to use our time wisely, and it's important, right, to, to be time conscious. The other thing is our talents, our abilities that we have, that you have and I have. There's... There's things that we're good at and skills. And some of us, we, we were like, no, I'm not really good at anything. I'm not really, I'm kind of, you know, I'm jack all trades, master nothing. Listen, some of you walk and chew gum at the same time, okay? That's a talent, okay? God can use that. We have talents. We have abilities. There's things that, that you know, if you're going, I don't know, I have talents and abilities. I want to use them. We can put you to work here in, in a good way. We, we're painting a building. I don't know if you notice, it's, you know, it's, scraping away and everything i'm telling our team steve who's leading the team i said it's not where you're you start doing it, it's where you stop scraping on this old building we're keeping it together we're doing the work that's there the other thing that we're doing treasure we have treasures there's there's wealth that you receive you know it's maybe not much of it but you're responsible for but it's also you're responsible not only what you have in in things but also people that you're a spouse, you're a parent, you're an employee, you're a family member. You're, you, you've been entrusted with us. So each of us have been graced with a set of keys. They all look a little bit different on the key ring, but there's responsibilities that we have. And the challenge is, and this is where the grit comes into it, is what are we going to do with it? We've been graced with these gifts, this, this gift of life. I mean, trust it. With, what, what are we going to do? So to help us go deeper, we're going to dive into a parable. And I think it's going to be, for you, you've been around for a while, you know this one pretty well. And, and for those who are brand new, it'll be great for you to hear this. If you've been, a, you know it, may it refresh you today, these familiar words that we're going to look at. It's in Matthew 25. It's actually the passage after what we were, looked at last week in the parable of the virgins, the parable of the, the bridesmaids of Jesus coming back. And, and now Jesus goes further, and, and, and it, has, it has some second coming language in it. And as you, you, you hear it today of the description, there, there is some forethought of Jesus is communicating further on that. But it, it really is tying back to us and the responsibility that we have. So this starts off with this. Verse 14 says, again, it would be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his property to them. We're going to talk here, and if you've got notes, you can follow along, is this. We're talking about some keys to trust, the living life of trust. What are some keys to think about? First is this, is that everything we have, even our very lives, is a gift from God. Everything we have, it, it's, it's all, it all comes from God. It's a, it's a gift to get to us. So going back to think about, you know, when, when you're a kid, I was thinking when I was a kid, I was a I don't know if you know this, I was an only child. Is there any only children here, only child? Okay, raise your hand. Okay, we're, we, we're solidarity. And, and you know this. When you raise your hand, the people know you, they go, we know you're an only child. We know that, right? But an only child, I had possession of what was my room. You know, my room is my space, my bed, my dresser, my toys, okay? My Legos. My cousins come over, like, I'm counting all my, you don't take any of my stuff. It's my stuff, my room. But it really wasn't mine. 
It really was Chuck and June McAvoy's that lived at 3311 McAlpine Road. That's, it was there. Well, not really theirs because there was a mortgage. They, the bank owned it, actually, right? But the bank doesn't own it. No, who owns it? God owns it. And we, we, we forget that we live in God's room. You know, the Bible says this, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all the people that belong to it. God owns it all. But he's giving us on loan. Say, what are you going to do with what I've given you? I've got, a, I've, I've got something on loan for you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this to you. Are you going to steer and be stewards of what I have for you? It's, it's God's property. It was, it was his before you arrived, and it will be his afterwards, after you die. You know, you're inherent to the kids, but it really is going to be, it's all his. Apostle Paul, like how he says this in the early church about giving us, God giving us the keys that he owns. He says, what do you have that God hasn't given you? And if you, everything you have is from God, why boast as though it was not a gift? If we think in this place of gift in life, there's a little bit of lifting, because we can really, it can, you say, you possess, it can possess you, what you're holding on to, and, and holding it a little bit lighter. It doesn't mean we, we don't relinquish, we don't, we don't want to let go of our responsibilities, but we are entrusted with it. So when we think about time, it's not really your time. Maybe, maybe you've been caught, you don't have to raise your hand, but maybe you've been on your phone and your boss comes along and, hey, do that on your own time, right? You punch out or whatever and you can have, but really you're not even on your own time. Even though you're not in your job, it's God's time. You, you don't have your own time, it, it's, it's really his time. It's not really your talents. There, there is some things that God put in you and born talents. You've developed skills and education and practice and training to get to where you're at. But they really, they really come from God. And it's not your treasure. You're going, yeah, it's my house, it's my bank account, it's my 401k. Not really. No, it's, it's ultimately it's God's. And God's given us entrusted with this. And so the prayer that is good to pray each morning is, Lord, every ounce, every moment, every breath I take comes from you, that whatever you give me, may I use it to please you. May I take my life and use it to please you with what I have. My life, as Paul says, is not my own. I was bought with a price. I'm going to honor God with I'm going to honor God, God with my life. Another key of living a life of trust is this. It's not about ha- what we ha- don't have, but it's discovering what we do have. I'll say it again. It's not about what we don't have, but discovering what we do have. Do you remember your first car? Can we, how many of you remember your first car? Okay. You, you, you had it, and I don't know how you got your first car. Someone maybe handed to you their old car. Parents like, you can drive the old car. We did that with our kids for a, a period of time. Here's the old one. Guess what? I'm going to get a new car or a newer car. But I remember my car, and I worked really hard at a fruit stand to earn money to buy this. It was a 1974 Datsun 610. Four-door automatic. Right next to the description was gutless. That's what it was. Went up Alabama Hill at 25 miles an hour, top speed. Okay? Zero to 60 in five minutes. You know what I'm saying? So not the, you know, you know, not the hot date car you, you wanted to take along. So especially if I had my geeky friends in the back and we're just trying to go where we need to go. And, and my stereo system, it was. It was worth more than, than the car itself. But it was my car and I owned it. And I would have to admit at times, I had friends that had really nice cars. Either rich parents uh, that had them or they had a dad that helped them build the muscle car, the hot rod and, and the Camaros and the Mustangs that they had. And so I had the Datsun and that's what I had. It was, it was mine. I don't care about any age and stage of life. We can kind of get in the comparison game a little bit. And we start comparing the set of keys with other set of keys of people. And Jesus does that a little bit. He differentiates in the story that we're going to look at that he gave different sets of keys to different people. And sometimes it doesn't feel fair, but as we look at it, as we talked last week, God isn't fair, but he is, he is good. And this is what it, this good owner says of three guys getting three different sets of keys. He says to the one, he gave five bags of gold to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to their ability, or his ability, that he went, then he went on his journey. So what we got here is, it's not chump change amount of money. One bag of gold, and if in your Bible translations, it might say talent, one talent, one bag of gold, was equal to about 6,000 hours of wages. Just one. 
No, they, the, the dude that got five, that they, they, they predict that's like 80 years of wages. That's like winning the lottery. And I think almost Jesus is making this point is the one that the five, that's your lifetime. That is your life I'm giving, your livelihood I'm, I'm giving to you. Well, like any typical landowner, they delegate the responsibilities and they, they gave out what, what the, they want to do. Now, why did they do this? Because they're the owner. They can give it in different ways they want, in different measurements, because it was if life is a trust, they're entrusting the, the, the amount to each of these people that, that, are, that happen to be different. And he gave them out to what he think is best for them to invest. And I think at times we, we find ourselves, again, struggling a little bit when we see a person with this much over here and this much over here and this much over here, whatever that might be. And if we're not careful, we get, get in the curse of comparison and we begin to look at it all. And it can be very defeating and very, I guess in some ways, deflating. When we spend a lot of time sizing up the different makes and models of what other people have, it really is exhausting in the comparison we do, rather than staying focused on that. I'm guilty of that as well. I see that all the time, okay? I, I find myself in life, and why do, I, why do I keep doing that? But we can get caught up in that as well. So here's a question to help us, though, to help try to break that curse of comparison is this. How do you and I feel when others succeed in life? How do, we, how do you feel when others succeed or others fail in life, right? Let's admit, this is kind of a dirty secret no one wants to admit. When someone's struggling a little bit, you, you can relate with them a lot better, can't you? You're like, oh, I know what it feels like. I know what it's like going through. And there's a weird thing about it going, okay, I'm not that bad, okay? I'm okay, you know, in life. It's, and this is not me, me, I'm admitting it. There's sometimes, like, I can relate with that. I sometimes struggle when people get successful, and we look at that, and we're kind of going, yeah, but how did they get there? And we begin to put doubt in their minds. And what it is, is we have our own insecurities with what we receive them. Nobody wants to admit that. But it happens in our lives many, many times to do that. We want to, we want to rise above it. And that's the challenge that we face is that, you know, we, Jesus is calling us to rise above that consumer-driven lives and find and strive for contentment. But what we're going to talk about here, just being content and playing safe is not God's calling and God's will for our lives. See, so another key to living a life of trust is this, is being faithful is about taking a risk of faith. Being faithful is actually be, be about taking a risk of faith. See, one of the misconceptions in the Christian life that it's, a, it's boring, it's kind of a buzzkill. Because the outside looking in, people look at that and going. I gotta, I gotta follow a bunch of rules. I've gotta come to a building each week. I gotta be here every week or almost every week. People decide they, they I need to, I need to give money. I need to serve the world or all these things. And not that those things are bad. That's part of that can be part of the activities of following Jesus. But if that's it, a bunch of to do lists, it's not that exciting. And why strap myself to all those things? But you know, as a follower of Jesus, as those are involved in the activities. That's not the heart of what we do and why we do it. People don't realize is that when you follow Jesus, it's the most adventurous thing you can ever be a part of. Not to say it's easy, but it's an adventure and there's fulfillment. People are not realizing when they talk to the men and women who serve in villages and in, in jungles across the world and bringing the gospel and seeing tribes and cities transform the power of Jesus. They, they haven't really experienced that. You, they haven't experienced what it's like to, to partner with somebody who's going through addiction and praying for them and seeing healing and restoration and, and, and freedom in their life. They've, they've never walked with people through that. Or maybe themselves have gone through that to find that level of freedom. Many of you have. You know what it's like. You know what it's like to have a broken marriage and struggles and pain and difficulties. And you've been in a place of hopelessness in those relationships, either parenting or job or whatever it is. And all of a sudden, God comes in your life and through the power of Jesus transforms you. And that not only helped you in the needs you have, but brought fulfillment in your life. And, and, and some of the broken relationships have now have been repaired. And there's a work that God's doing in an incredible way. That is some many of you know that people don't realize what it's like to be a follower of jesus when they when they go and and like we had last sunday evening of six people getting baptized i think we got a picture of that here from last 
These people right here, let's give them a hand. Some of them are in the room here. And it's the beautiful picture about that is this, is they're, they're wet, but also some of the, the, the wet there is, is from tears. Because there was a transformation, even in the moment, as the Spirit of God touched them, and they felt just this, this release and this freedom and this washing of forgiveness of what Jesus already did in the symbol of baptism. That is what it's all about. Nothing of that is boring. But remember this, and I want you to think about this. Being faithful is about being faith-filled. It's not playing it safe. We're never called, look at verse 16. It says this, The man who received five bags of gold went out once and put the money to work and, fit and gained five bags more. This also, the one with two bags of gold gained two more. What is it meaning? Faith is a risk of what God has entrusted us with. There are the guys with the five, and there's the guys with the two. It says this, they put their money to work. What did they do? They put it all in. They put it, they, they took, they put it to work. They, they went to work, and they, 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 with God's grace and what gave them, now they need, needed a little bit of grit. They needed a little bit of like, okay, we're going to do something with what we have. We're going to make it work. And they worked it because, but they knew there's a risk. There's a, there, there's a possibility that there could be some loss in that process but they they did that the greatest way to be faithful to God is stepping out in faith with what he's given us see life is a trust but also it's a test of that trust several years ago they did a study on churches and growing churches and you know whatever you're trying to do whatever endeavor you're trying to do you want to do more you want to reach more just like we we want to do that and they did they did this study and they found a common denominator of growing churches you know what it was it, wasn't, it had nothing to do with the size. It had nothing to do with the demographic. It had nothing to do with the doctrinal statements. It had nothing to do with the denomination they're part of. It had nothing to do with the, re, the region it, it came from. This is the common denominator of all these growing churches was this. It, they call it the faith factor. That the people of the church said, we are going to risk it to reach our community. We're going to do things outside of our comfort zone. We're going to step out of our bubble. We're going to reach out and care for people in such a way that there's a risk in what we're investing in and the very things that we have. And I can tell you about this church over the many, many years at North Bay, we have taken some big risks. We've been a part of joining a network of churches. We've been part of planning a church in CTK Blaine. That's over there in Blaine now. We've, we've released and set people on mission work across the world. We've been a church of, of, of giving and releasing. And, 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 and what, what do we have? We have this wonderful building here that needs still to be painted. Because you're like, we didn't put our money into this for sure. But what we said is, Lord, you're going to take care of our needs here, but we're going to risk it, and we're going to go further than whatever God you want to do. And here we are for that. There is a risk. I can't, looking back and going, it's been hard, it's been arduous, but I would not say it's been boring, being what, what God wants to do next. Let me ask you for your sake this question. What have you been entrusted with that God is calling you to take a risk with? Could you admit, could you evaluate today? And I, I know some of you are in like tough places, like financially, relationship, health. You're like, I'm just trying to hold things together. I'm not really talking to you today because you're, you're there. But I'm, I'm probably speaking to the people, some of us, if we kind of find a, a pocket of comfortability and going, I'm going to sit back and I'm going to relax and I'm going to enjoy life. Nothing wrong with that. But if life is just for you to do that, is it possibly that you're not, not being faithful because there's a faith-filled step that you need to take a risk. And, we, and, and what we do is we, we, we make excuses for that. We say, you know, I don't have a lot of time. And, and it, listen, time is very limited. In the season you're in, and children at home, or you know, businesses, or whatever you're doing, you're, you're, I get that all. But is it possible there's a risk of time to reach out in a greater way that God can meet the miracle? I think there's in the Bible, right? Joshua, isn't it, where he, the sun stood still? <laughs> The, what is he saying? God, God can take care of the time. He can, he can do a miracle with your time. The other thing is this, you know, you don't, you don't have the talent. I don't have the abilities. Again, you can chew gum and walk, and there's some things you're, you're good at that you can do. What is it that you're going to do to use God in that next step? You know, what are you going to do with the treasury God has given you? There's a nest egg. There's, a, there's an investment. There's, there, this, it's, it can be monetary. It could be recession. But you've got just a beautiful heart. 
You've got people around you that there's a treasure of who you are that you can bless others with, whatever that might be. Understand, faithful does not mean to protect and hold back. Being faithful is taking risk. And we look at the, we look at the, 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 the guy that did the five, and he invested in the five. We look at the person that invested in the two, then did the two. The one is kind of a challenge. Let's just admit, because we, we, you know, we, you know, we'll find out that the, the one is, oh, it's not that the, you got the best response from the, the owner. But when you're the one, that's tough, right? Because you can look at the, the person that's got the five and like, well, if they risk, you know, a couple, they still got three left. I mean, if you got two, you, you know, you risk one, you still got one in the pocket, right? But if you got one, that's a big ask, right? Can I challenge us with this? We only have one life. We only get one life. What are we going to do with that, that one that was there? It's a risk. What happened with this guy, with the one, is he wasn't faithful, but he was actually, well, he was fearful. Jump to the end of the story here is that the man was, that received the one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I know you're a hard man, harvesting you not sown and gathering you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid it in the gold in the ground. So here's what belongs to you. Here, I'm giving it back. He's almost kind of going, look, I, I took care of it. I didn't risk it. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't mess it up. I wanted to make sure. But what is he saying? It's kind of a backhanded compliment to the landowner. I didn't really trust you. I didn't really believe that you're that good. I was afraid of you. So I just didn't, I didn't want to do anything. It was almost, I think he was almost thinking that was a good thing that he did. Well, not really at all. Because the whole point was the risk he was going to take with what God's given him. That life is a trust. See, what happens with fear, it, it'll bury us. Fear will bury us. It will put us in a hole and it'll put us in a place and we're paralyzed with it. And the hardest thing with all life comes and all that comes at us is at the end of the day, what we have to trust the most, that God is good, that he is the good owner, he is the good boss, that wants us to take a risk with what, not what we have, but what he has given us. See, faith is, is not a feeling. It's the courage to act and to believe, and it takes some grit. What is that risk that you're willing to take? And here's the thing. We serve a God. We serve a good, we serve a good owner that owns it all. And he says, I want to give this to you. I want you to take a risk with it. And when we take a risk, God loves that. God loves it. Why? He says he does. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. What does it say? Because anyone who comes to him must believe he exists and he's a reward, a reward of those who earnestly, or your Bible might say, diligently seeks him. Him, what he's doing. Where's your faith in that? Where's that risk you're willing to? to take but here's the thing at the end of it this is important to know is finally is this we eventually will be accountable to what we did or didn't do with what we've been entrusted with let me say that again now don't you think about this we eventually will be accountable to what we did or didn't do with what we are entrusted with a lot of times we get focused on what we didn't do is the good thing well at least i didn't sin at least i didn't do the bad stuff Good job, okay? Step one, good job. That's not bad. I'm, I'm, come on, that's a good thing. I'm not downplaying, you know, you know, not doing bad stuff. That's a good way of being obedient. But there's other, that's, that's, a, that's a commission sin. But the omission sin is not doing the things that God's called us to do. That is equal as well to sin. James says that. There's a, there's a Bible verse that says that, that we, it's not, we focus on what we didn't do. Listen, there is, there is something that's there of, of, of a mission. I didn't do what God called me to do. Why? Because, well, somehow we think being a Christian is being safe and, being, and taking care of what we have because we think that's what it looks like. Well, that is not ultimately following God's will. We, we're safe and secure in, in Jesus, but we're not safe and secure in, in our little faith little bubble because it's not a bubble at all. It's, it needs to be popped because we're accountable at the end of what we, what we do. I don't think Doug, is Doug here today? Doug Lang, are you here today? Okay, so I can talk about him. Let's talk about Doug. 
Doug's a great example. A few years ago, it's actually during the pandemic, we were finishing up what we call it Quad, as a discipleship group. And Doug was in this group, myself and a couple other guys, and we were getting toward the end of our, our, our time together, and Doug got really challenged. He had just retired as a, as a contractor, and he's looking like, what am I going to do with my life? And he admitted this. He says, he says this, I, don't, I, don't, I looked in the Bible, and there's no word of this called retirement in the Bible. And he was challenged by that. There's this doesn't exist. There's no word retired. There's, there's tired. There's weariness. There's not retirement. And, and so Doug started serving at the bridge, which is a ministry that we help those in need with food and clothing and counseling. It's a beautiful thing that we, a lot of us, you know, many of us partner with and to help support that and do that. Doug began to kind of work and serve, and pretty soon he started kind of running things. Now he's the director of it. And I, I use that example for Doug and for many of us. I'm not sure necessarily saying, oh, God has that plan and purpose for you, whatever that might be, but he has it in some form. Doug, is, you can pray for him this week. He's getting knee replacement surgery. Uh, so keep him in prayer. But I use Doug as an example of being faithful and saying, I'm going to risk it. I'm not going to play it safe in retirement. I'm going to take the next step. So I don't know what that looks like for you. But here's what's kind of interesting as we finish this story. Because what happens is this landowner, he comes back. I trust you with it. What are you going to do with it? I want you to come back. And this is what he says. After a long time, after a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you trust me with five bags of gold. See, I've gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who, with two bags of gold, came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I've gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Can I tell you, you know, there is a challenge with that. I emphasize a long time. Faithfulness is, is, is a long time, isn't it? Faithfulness is saying, I'm going to stick with what God's called me to do, and I'm going to continue to do it, and it's faithful, being faithful. If we got instant reward on something, that would be called fun, okay? And we just call it fun. We don't call it faithful. But what it is is taking the risk, and sometimes we take the risk, and then we sit back and go, I'm so glad. I don't have to take any more risks any longer. I got to where I haven't arrived with it. Sorry. <laughs> Doesn't quite work that way. There's another hill to climb, and there's another work God's called us to do, no matter the age we are, and the abilities and the time and the talent God's given us. And that's what these guys did. They took what they received, and they did more with it. Yeah, you know, you might go, man, it's good for the guy that had five. It's good for the guy that had two, but I, what if I only have the one? Well, we're to use that one the best that we can, to be faithful with a few, be in charge of many. I don't know if Doug Lang wanted to be in charge of the bridge. God called him into that. I don't think that was something he inspired to do. I'm not saying that it's all about being promoted to the company and be the president of, if you're working in your job. You, some of you go, I don't want that job. <laughs> some of you, I don't want that. I'm just saying God is the one that promotes us. God is the one that rewards us. God is doing a work and, and calling us to it. And there's going to be mistakes along lines. There's going to be there's going to be things that we do. And there's going to be a risk involved. But what I love in the liberation is knowing this, that God, whatever it is, is not going to love us less when we mess up. He loves us trying. There's a risk in trying. See, love is unconditional, right? God loves us. There's nothing we could do. There's, we sang about it today, the, the amazing grace of God. There, there, we can't earn it or buy it or anything. We know that. Many of you know that already. If you don't know that, you can't. That's the God's grace. But the grit involved is it's going to be some courage that's going to take. And that's the trust that's in there. God loves everybody, but doesn't trust everybody equal. That's pretty hard. You know, you think about that. Really? That's, it really is true. Just like you with people, you, you love a lot of people. Maybe you love everybody, but I bet you don't trust everybody equal, right? You don't hand the keys over to, to everybody in your life. There's, there's trust. God is the same way. Here's the question. Can God trust you with what he's giving you? Can he trust you? You know, well done, good, and not successful, right? Well done, good, and faithful. 
It's not about how much you did or how, you know, it's about that faithfulness that there. There's a reward. He says, come and share in the master's happiness. If you're not just being faithful, then being faith-filled. Use what I give you. Not what you don't have, because we can spend a lot of time focusing on that. We got to think about what we do have. That is what you're in charge of. You, each one of us has a unique set of keys. They're just different. There's different, there's different keys for different responsibilities. What are you doing with what you have? And he said, there'll be a reward in what you have one day. I don't know what heaven's going to look like. I mean, the Bible says, it's a, a, no, I can see, no ear can hear. What, like, it's going to be amazing. Whatever you think is amazing, just exponential, you know, times million, right? Will there be a VIP section in heaven? I don't know. I, I bet it won't be any, I'm sorry, everybody was on stage day. We probably won't make it because we've already got our accolades. You know, if you've got a YouTube channel, and you're not, you know, I don't know. It's going to be people that we don't even know and never, ever met that prayed for us and believed in it. They're probably going to, I don't know how that's going to work. All I know, there's going to be reward, but for faithful to what we, what we received and what we've done. It all depends on what we did and what God has entrusted us with. And he's given us this life of a trust. What will we do with it? And we have that opportunity. No matter how old you are, so no matter where you come from, what you've done, this is the moment. This is the opportunity. I'm gonna invite our team to come as we close and at a time here and today. And as they do, I want our, our our welcome team as well. Go ahead, team. Go ahead and start passing out. We have sections for each of you. They're gonna give today to you right now. You can start passing them out. Each one of you today is going to receive. Right now, they're they're coming with it. And they're going to give you a wonderful, this isn't a very crisp dollar bill, but everybody's going to receive a dollar bill today. In fact, it's going to be passed today in a basket. And if you could take one, <laughs> as this pass, what we're doing, we're trusting you that you'll do one dollar, okay? And you're receiving a dollar today. I went down to my bank account, drained it with a hundred, you know, you know, whatever I gave today. Not a lot. But each of you has a dollar. I want you to take a dollar. Some of you are like, oh, no, don't do that. No, please take a dollar because it's a, it's a responsibility in calling you to do. They're going to pass those out to you. If you do it quick. And as they do, I want to talk about this for a moment. I want to give you a dollar challenge, okay? I want you to this week begin to think about God how will I use what you've given me it's a dollar you're like it's not much to do much with but it is there's a trust how do I know it's trust because it's written right on the back did you see that have you noticed this lately that it's still after the world and culture we live in our country in God we trust wow it's still on there I think a lot of people would be afraid to take that off. But what, there's, what is it saying is, we trust in God. We trust in God. It's not the almighty dollar, it's, it's our almighty God that we have. What has he entrusted you with? Well, if you don't know it, you at least got a dollar. You have a dollar to do something with. What are you going to do with your dollar this week? will you do with it? Will you, will you reach out to somebody this week and at least contribute toward a tip toward a coffee, a, a little bit of money toward say, I'm, hey, let me, can I buy you coffee? And that, and that dollar of use to help pay for that. It might be someone that is in need, legitimately in need that you're going to give to this week. And you're going to probably contribute more to them in a, in a form, in a way that's, that's helpful for them and as you give them. It might be today, you might be challenged with a new endeavor, and this is the moment that God is speaking to you, and you've been looking for confirmation. God, I want to take a risk more. I, I just need a sign from you. Here's your sign. This is your moment. This is your opportunity to invest in something new. It might be a business. It might be, it might be a ministry. It might be serving in an area that you're going to buy a little bit of gas for your tank and you're going to go, whatever, whatever symbolically this is going to look like for you, you're going to do that. What good will you do to advance God's kingdom that he's called you with? It's just one. It's not five. Sorry, I'm not that wealthy. I can't give that much money out. No, five, not two, it's one. We have one life to use. 
Jesus. What are you going to do with it? And then at the end of the day, as God's trusting you, what do you need to trust God with, with your life today? He's given it to you. He's given it to you. He's given, he's given you a life. What, what, what will it be right now in this moment? Will you, will you pray with me? Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. Thank you for just a beautiful day of worshiping you. And thank you for this team and friends coming together. It's just a reunion in many ways for many of us here. Thank you for that moment. And really, it's a reunion every week. We, we, come, we come to this place and we gather. And it's not just to come and, and sing and, and have a message, which is wonderful. But we come because we've got friends. Oh, family. Actually, family together. The body of Christ is a, is a family of God that we come together that we hear, and they're here to invest in one another. Lord. So there's there is the we part of it, but there's also the the personal challenge that we re- receive today. And simply is this: What will we do with what has been given to us, Lord? You didn't even give us five lives. You didn't give us two lives. You give us one. What will I do with my one this week? What will that look like? Investing in. I pray for those that would say that. They're a bit overwhelmed. They're just overwhelmed. Their they're, life is very difficult right now. Life is very hard right now. They don't feel like they have enough time. They don't have enough talents. They don't have enough energy. They don't have enough they don't have resources around them. They're just barely surviving. And I, I just pray with all grace, Lord, you would pour out to them. Lord, will you, will you pour out your abundance on them? They don't deserve it. We don't deserve it. But that's, that's what grace is. It's, it's meeting the needs. Not only to save us, Lord. And there might be here today some people that just need to say, Jesus, be my Lord and Savior. Saving grace today, but also, but also sustaining grace. Will you do that? Will you pour that out? Will you bless them abundantly? Their health issues, their finances, their relationships, whatever, whatever needs, Lord. But in that, even in that blessing, even as that poured out, Lord, for ourselves, what, Lord, will we do with what we have? Lord, will you give us the courage? Will you give us the grit, the strength to say, Lord, I have an opportunity. And I pray that you speak to people even now and even as they drive home and as they wake up in the morning, as they spend time with you, that it just click. They would hear it. They would see it. And they would know. It could be a grand dream or it could be a simple phone call, a simple text to a friend to get together, to reach out. Lord, you have given them the ability to hear from you, to receive what it is, and to be faith-filled as well as being faithful. To trust in that you're a good landowner. You are a good boss. You're a good God. We don't have to be in fear. We can step out in faith. And yet, there's times with trepidation that we hand, trembling hand, the keys, Lord, of our life over to you and to what is next. And Lord, trust, help us, Lord. And God, it's not only getting through that, 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 uh, that risk, but what you promised in your word that if we step out in faith, that we take the risk that you reward those who diligently seek after you. God, you're a rewarder of that. And whatever way that might look, it could be a promotion, but a promotion in the way that you would do that. That you would, the, the keys that we trust in would give access to what is next and what you want to do. That brings freedom, that brings forgiveness, that brings that brings opportunities to be a greater influence for your kingdom. Because really that's what matters the most. Because you've given keys to your kingdom. You've given us authority. To whatever is what is bound in heaven will be loose. So whatever is loose in heaven will be unloosed. Lord, you've given us that that wonderful gift, the power, empowerment by your very spirit to see the lives change. Not only the six that were baptized, but there's going to be another six. There's going to be another people. There's going to be people who you're going to give access access to that we can invest in and 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 see lives transform, Lord. That's the work you're doing, Lord. Start with us, the one. Lord, here we are. Lord, use us today. For your kingdom and your glory, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I invite you to stand as we close today. Um, and I really challenge you with your dollar bill. Here's the thing. We don't want to see a bunch of dollar bills in the offering bucket today. Okay? Like, I'm just going to give that back to God. There you go. I only, I only say if you think that is your first step because you've never given money in a church before, guess what? It's not yours to give. 
And God can call you right now. Like, that might be, there might be someone here goes, if there's a dollar bill, you can put it in because it's the first time you've ever given. If you've already given a dollar bill to the church, don't give it back to the church. Give it to the kingdom. Use what God's giving you today as an opportunity to do that. But before you go and before we're sent out back into this, this week, there is some folks that would love to pray with you here. Anything that's on your heart. I actually feel there's a few people that are struggling with fear right now to step out, and you need some folks around you to pray for you on that, to take that extra step. We have friends to do that, family to do that here together. So as they come forward, you can come forward in this last song. Carly and Sam, it's a joy to have you both today and the entire team there. Thank you for leading us. Let's sing this together as we close. Have a great day.